Well, I was up here about four months ago, I would say, about four months, and where we're at, we're at a place called Spring Canyon, and Spring Canyon is above Helper, Utah. Now, what Spring Canyon is, it's an old mining district back from, and I'm sure you can hear that. You can hear that in the background. We got a bunch of free range cattle over here having a good time. So, yeah. So, anyway, we're in Spring Canyon. Now, this used to be a mining district and it's hundreds and hundreds of acres. So, there's like 20 or 30 mines up here. I'm going to make it quick and short. There's 20 or 30, maybe more, abandoned mines in this district this district they call spring canyon and there was dozens of small little what can we say communities or towns in here the whole valley the whole district the whole canyon is full of abandoned structures um houses um mines and just just abandon everything now i met the owner of part of this canyon and I believe he said he owed, he owns 35,000 acres. It was either 3,500 or 35,000. And he is building a house down the road. It's a really nice guy. His name was Rick. He's from Salt Lake City. And I filmed with him for a while, but I was using my iPhone to do it with. And it didn't come out good at all. So we had to scrap that footage. But I'm going to kind of... Uh, go over what he told me about the place and see if we can take it from there. So the structure we're looking at right here, and our buddy Rick, he actually had these signs made up, and they're all over the place. You can read this sign right here. Um, he had a bunch of signs made up, and I'm going to tell you why he's got signs everywhere. But it says, private property, no trespassing, no graffiti, no vandalizing. Violators will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law under 24-hour surveillance. Now, when he bought the canyon, this building that we're looking at, and I'm going to give you some history on this building in a minute. This building we're looking at was scattered and tattered with graffiti. You couldn't even see any of the bricks. It was uh, demolished. It was trashed out, totaled out. And he cleaned this whole building up. And you can kind of see remnants of where he has uh, taken graffiti off and tried to match the brick color you can see it right here and then right over here and he actually went inside the building itself and he painted all the walls and you can see the different color paint that he put on it so he tries to keep it as natural and as um, comforting as possible on this structure because this here structure is actually a very famous structure from the mining days of the uh, Spring Canyon era. Now, according to Rick, the owner of the property, he says that this area right here, this room right here, was the bar area. And this was where everybody gathered after a hard day's work in the mines, that you would come through these doors right here, and then in this area right here, of course, they had walls that were separating all the rooms. But in this area right here, this was your bar area. You can kind of visualize the bar being maybe over here. And then he said there was two pool tables over here and then other scattered 
meticulous tables uh, around the area. But this was where everybody gathered. The bar would stay open until about 2, 3 in the morning, and then it would close and open the next day. And then if I remember correctly, this was part of a hotel system up in here, in this area. This is where they had a couple rooms they would rent out, and um, that would be the hotel up in this area right here. Now over in this area right in here, I believe this was like the city hall area. This is where the city hall um, employees would be up here in the front. You got your two entry doors possibly. There would be a staircase going up to offices and other structures of other stuff. And if you look up there real tall, it looked like there was actually another level above that. So this was actually a three-story building on both ends. And then in the center of the building, um, that would be your grocery store. That would be where your grocery store is, your general store, your commodities, and everything that you would purchase to basically live on. So this was an important structure as far as the uh, canyon itself goes. And if we look down on the floor right here, you can see this is basically what they used to mine for right here. This is it. Coal mine, right there. This was a coal mine and uranium mine area. And the main thing that they would get out of this canyon was coal. But there was also another important story that he told me, and we're going to go over and look at it. And that's the reason I drove all the way up here. So we're going to go over there and look at that. And what the important story was is around this corner right here, around this corner where you can see my truck parked here, there's a, there's a walkway that goes all the way around the corner. And there's a structure over there, and there was an older man that was a miner all his life. He got black lung, and he lived, literally lived in a cave. And we're going to go look at that structure. Um, I don't remember what his name was, but I think his first name was Joe. And what the tale about this guy is, is that Joe would come down the trail. He would come down his little trail. And he would go over here to the bar every night to get his two or three drinks. And then he would walk back to his little cave, his little hut, and that's where he lived. And the mining company let him live there basically until he died. But the deal is, is Joe didn't show up for his nightly brewskis, you might say, one day. And they were wondering where he was, and a couple guys walked down the path and they found Joe dead laying in the middle of the path to his house. So we're going to go look at that um, real quickly here. But I want to go ahead and show you some other structures up here that have been abandoned. If you look at this area right here, you can kind of see the layout of where a foundation of a building used to be. And Rick told me this was your typical housing uh, facility that the miners would live in. Um, if we come up here, you can kind of see there's a, a concrete platform here that would be uh, possibly the entry to the house or some sort. Um, here's part of the foundation to the house. And then there's a set of steps that go up here. I don't know what they would go up to. Possibly they would come down. And then the house would be in here in this area right here where I'm standing. And if you look back there in the crevice, you can see there's a some sort of possibly a root cellar or a storage bin of some type back there. So this would be their living quarters. And there was another building that was sitting right in this area here. You can see this is how they used to make their walls. They would take the limestone or the sandstone, whatever that is, and they would literally block it up themselves, chisel and block it to make blocks to make walls. Now, we're going to be real careful walking in here. Um, you got a lot of lumber in here that's got nails and debris, so we're going to be careful. But uh, look right here, and you can see part of the structure where this would have been a floor, and then you'd walk up and there'd be something else right in here. And then, once again, here's the wall that we were talking about. 
but then you walk back here and then there's a structure back there you can see the roof is caved in and falling off and yeah but you got to understand back in the you know early 1900s possibly 1920s in that era I mean this was high living this was the way that you lived out here and then if we look at the uh, back of the big building here we see that there's other structures inside and I think that he said this was the store so I think he said maybe this was the store uh, this was where the store was right in this area here so this would be where your store is and I believe he said this was the cold storage this is where they had the uh, freezer section of the building itself and they would keep all their frozen goods in here but um, this was the store I believe that's what he said this was the grocery store just to give you an aspect on like let's say the root cellar here's a caved in little storage unit that uh, they built back in the day okay so now that we kind of got the backstory on what's going on up here um, let's go over to look at uh, minor Joe's place and actually see the house that he lived in so when I came up here with Rick we kind of went this way over here and we followed a little trail and he also told me that he leases his property out for free-range cattle so he makes a little money doing that but that he doesn't mind visitors coming up here he just doesn't want his property trashed out and he said that there is dozens dozens and dozens of abandoned structures throughout the 35,000 acres that he owns and if you look right there there's another abandoned structure that has collapsed and fallen in and we'll probably see some more as we go up here let's kind of walk up the trail here you can kind of kind of seismite and speculate where these structures were there was another one right here maybe we can get in here and look at this one together now once again I don't want to go too far in um, I am up here by myself so if something happened I would be screwed but you can see here's a structure that looks like it was a square room right here and look at the walls how they built them yeah and then over in this area right here you can see that the structure still goes on all the way through the tree so this was actually a big building right here this building here was actually a building that stretched all the way over to there I mean look at that so I made my way up to the top of this little structure right here and you can see where it caved in but um, also look how it goes up to another structure on top of it over there rick told me that this is basically how big a house would be for a miner back in the day this was basically the size right here if you ever heard the old saying one room shack well that's what you're looking at right here so we don't know what this structure was but we do know one thing we need to watch out for nails old rusty nails on the foot is no good and here's our brick wall once again or should I say rock wall it's not bricks 
So. Let's see what we got here. Look at this. They used to build their little shacks right into the rock of the mountain. Looky there. Wow. And just to give you a better look at that, that's what we're talking about. You can see how the wall came out here and it probably came down this way and then went that way and then it had a roof built onto it. But they basically attached it to that crevice over there so they can have more room to live in. Um, it would give it more of a natural space. So back to the story of Colmeyer and Joe. When we came up here with Rick, this gate was actually locked. It was not unlocked like that. And I actually had to help him close the gate. So somebody's been up here since. And more than likely, it's probably some 4x4 guy that came up here on his property. And that's another thing he doesn't like is people travel. I mean, you got to understand it is his property. But this is where we are going to see Coal Miner Joe's house. And once again, Coal Miner Joe used to walk all the way down to the local bar, which was at the big building I showed you. And he'd get his drinks, and then he'd walk back home. So, kind of make yourself feel like we're actually walking on the trail to our house back in the 1910s, 1920s, as we float down this dirt path after bruising ourselves up with a couple brewskis and coming home to our run room shack which is located so this is where coal miner Joe actually lived for approximately 35 years of his life 35 or 40 years of his life this is it this is his shack and we're gonna go in there and look at it check it out. If you look right here, you can see where coal miner Joe made himself a set of stairs to climb up to go to his shack. And then he would come up here. And then once we got up here, this is where he would be right here. So we go into the shack and this is where he lived. This is it. This was his window. You can see there's his table. His table was set up right here and this is where he would sit right here and I believe Rick said that there was a wood burning stove in this area here where he'd do all his cooking and you can see the outlet for the exhaust right there and then Rick said up in this area of course it's been demolished and abandoned by now. But this was where he had his freezer area and he'd stuff it with ice. And this would be his like refrigerator where he'd keep all his food that he would have. But uh, this is where he slept right here. This was his bedroom right there. That's where coal miner Joe slept. There was a little mattress in there, Rick said, when he bought the property. It was a rotted out mattress. And that was probably the mattress that he slept on. Old spring mattress. And he even said that it had some hay that was stuffed in it. Like it started wearing out and uh, coal miner Joe stuffed it with hay or something. But um, yeah, this is it. I mean, pff, wow. Very, very primitive. Now people have to have... 2,500 plus square foot homes to live in when back in the day this is what this is what they they lived in this was this is what made them happy right here this was their home now the only thing that lives in here is little varmints and little animals that might crawl way up in that hole right there and build themselves a nest and there is a nest right there looks like a bird nest but this is the inside of what a coal miner's shack 
really is from the coal miner days. Um, I would say, to give you a perspective of how big this little bedroom is right here, to give you a perspective, I'm thinking, here's my hand right here. So I'm thinking that's probably maybe six feet wide. And then it goes back in probably six feet. And then standing at the entrance right here, you can see, kind of goes around. I'd say this is probably an eight foot round area, eight foot. Um, the ceilings, as you can see, they're not that, I mean, it's almost hitting my head right here. It is hitting my head here. But then when we walk over here, of course, it's a little bit taller, but not much. So, yeah. When Rick was telling us the story about Coal Miner Joe, he kept focusing on this table. Um, this was actually a table that Coal Miner Joe made, and, and I believe that's one of the legs, and it was propped up here. And he said that Coal Miner Joe would come up here, and he would just sit here and stare out the window and just watch nature. That's, that's what he loved the most. Looking at his picture window here, beautiful picture window that's just a little bit bigger than my hand. And then he would sit here and just look out the window at nature and love what he saw. So kind of get it into perspective of what we're looking at here versus me. I'm actually six foot five and you can see the door's actually shorter than me. And this is it right here. This was paradise for people back in the day that worked 16, 18 hours a day to make a living. Now, I don't really want to bring this into this video, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. This is what made Miner Joe, Coal Miner Joe, happy. Look what it takes today to make a human being happy in the world. It's pathetic. It's greed. It's selfishness. It's attention whoreness. It's all about me, 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 me. When back in the day, the guy didn't even have electricity, and he was happy with his two drinks, his walk down to the bar, and his walk back. If you're watching this, and you're telling yourself, I don't have anything, look at me, I'm always broke, I can barely feed myself, I walk everywhere I go. Think of coal miner Joe and his little shack that he lived with, dirt floors. Never took a bath, never washed himself, was filthy dirty. And would look out his picture window and say, I'm happy. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that door open. Because um, we don't want the hinges broke on this thing. Being a relic that it is, this is kind of a museum piece, you might say. Um, so, we're going to go ahead and leave it open. We won't shut the door because someone will just come up here and rip it open anyway. But uh, I thought that you all get a kick out of that and think that that was a pretty interesting story about old coal miner Joe and his one room shack. So, as we're walking back down the trail to the um, general store, bar, we'll call it, uh, what can we say it's called, uh, uh, company store possibly? Anyway, as we walk down, uh, in this area right in here, this is where they found coal miner Joe laying dead. So he lived a very, very happy natural life. He died of black lung. He did what he wanted to do his lifetime. And he died in a nice, quiet place that he called home. So that was a nice little story about Spring Canyon. And I hope that you liked that story. Um, be watching for more stories about the history of Spring Canyon up here in Halper, Utah. Um, this was a very, very thriving industry up here. 
many, many people actually grew up here, went to school here, graduated from school here. There's actually an abandoned school building over here behind Rick's place and uh, where everybody went to school. So it's a, a very amazing place and if you know the history about it, it makes it even more unique. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, traveling around, meeting people, shaking hands, making friends, and learning history that I never knew about. Move! 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 